Lisa. It's so it's so nice to be here today. Thank you. And um, I, I hope we have a chance to everyone that's on um, to chat at the end if you have questions. Um, and uh, so as, as um, Elisa mentioned, today's topic is about the importance of product information to B2B buyers and how product information has become for manufacturers your most important asset because B2B buyer expectations are changing. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about that. So uh, if I can get my screen to advance here, there we go. Okay, so um, Elisa introduced us. So thank you. I'm Julie Omi. I'm Director of Partnerships in River, and I'm joined by Mary Kate, otherwise known as MK. I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, all. Thank you so much for taking the time to connect with us today. We know everyone has really busy schedules, so looking forward to giving you a little peek under the tent um, on product information management and really just all about your product data and, and how to continue to make it your most valuable asset. Um, my name is Mary-Kate Malk and I lead our e-commerce practice at Elysian Consulting based here in Chicago. Um, and prior to spending time at Elysian, I was in the consumer packaged goods industry for 10 plus years um, with Mondelez, Nabisco, Dan and Yogurt, and most recently Kimberly Clark prior, prior to coming over to consulting. So wanted to give you a little bit of background about Elysian as well. We are a team really of strategic product data management specialists that really focus at that intersection between your product data, um, your product information management tool, which we'll get into here, and really that customer relationship management system that your organization has. Um, and how did we get to this point? How do we get to this intersection? Um, our founders actually were two of the original architects that were over at Salesforce back in the early 2000s. Um, so they have a lot of passion and technical knowledge around the CRM side of things. Um, and then they actually started their first consultancy about you know 10 plus years ago that has since grown um, and sold over to West Monroe Partners here in Chicago. And so Elysian is actually their second consultancy that really does focus then not only on that CRM space, but also on that product information management side. We know that ultimately with the massive growth of e-commerce and being able to sell products online, especially here over the past few years, this is a very much growing and really very important space. Um, and we've seen a lot of success here and really have a passion for making sure that manufacturers in particular can get their product data to where it needs to be for their customers to help grow their business. So a little bit of background on Elysian. And then on this next slide here, you know, just really talking through, if we think about if there's one reason why Elysian exists and why we're so passionate about this space, we know that we live in a truly e-com digital world. We know that U.S. e-commerce sales were expected to reach nearly $1 trillion by the end of last year. We're, we're still waiting on those final numbers. Um, but that would account for nearly a quarter of total retail sales by 2025. Um, and I know all of you are, are experiencing this not only in your in your work lives, but also in your personal lives. Um, you know, what happens online, whether it's on your phone, on your computer, on your TV, all of that um, is really important for buyers. And we have to get in front of them and make sure that data is as up to date as possible. Um, companies truly do need to have their products on that digital shelf and really create a meaningful interaction. And that is what we're here to talk about today. So looking forward to engaging with you all. I'm going to pass it back over to Julie. Thank you. Um, so just real quick introduction. So um, I'm the director of partnerships at InRiver. Um, prior to being at InRiver, I was um, also a consultant, um, much like MK is now, um, you know, working with brands to um, help them understand their e-commerce strategy, channel disruption, customer retention, things like that, really with a focus on B2B. And now I'm at InRiver, which is a product information management tool um, that is really uniquely built for manufacturers to give them a single source of data, product data truth, um, which allows them to manage, manipulate, and publish product data to all, all selling channels. So that is who InRiver is, and now you know who Elysian is, and so uh, we'll get to the good stuff. So, you know, what we know is that expectations of B2B buyers have significantly shifted over the last handful of years. It used to be such a distinction between a B2B buyer and a B2C buyer. 
Um, but as I'm sure you've all seen in your space, the, the, the differences have become less and less and less to the point now where a B2B buyer has the same expectations when buying online as a B2C buyer. We, we all know about the Amazon effect. Um, and that, that really has bled into B2C, B2B buying. So that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on manufacturers to deliver on those expectations. And so we're gonna look at some really telling statistics about what's happening in the B2B buying journey that's really pushing us towards the need to harness product information to be able to deliver on those expectations. So let's take a look at what some of those statistics are. So foundationally, and this really is the sort of umbrella over our whole conversation today, is that B2B buyers expect a full digital buying experience. And that means that 78% of buyers are using multiple channels for that same transaction. You're doing that as a B2C buyer, right? You're probably looking at a retailer site. You may be on Amazon. You might be um, you know, looking at multiple different sites. Well, the B2B buyer is doing the same thing. Um, so whether they're on the manufacturer site or a distributor site, they're going to be doing that self-discovery of, of products and product research online across those multiple channels, because they've just come to expect that as the way that you buy online. And we know that 66% of B2B buyers prefer digital self-service. So, you know, in a space where, you know, it, it you know, historically has been very catalog heavy, very salesperson heavy. We know that 66% of those buyers, they want either a fully digital self-service or very remote, uh, you know, human interactions, meaning chat features, email, things like that. There's a ton of statistics around this, you know, like 78, 70 some percent of buyers, I don't have this one on here, but, um, you know, want, um, you know, they've done all of their research online, even if they do happen to talk to a salesperson. So it's no doubt you've seen these tremendous shifts in, in your business as you've been, um, you know, trying to meet some of these expectations. Um, and then we know that seven in 10 B2B buyers will actually switch suppliers if the digital buying process disappoints. This one just actually just blows my mind, right? That 70% of 70 of buyers will just go to a different supplier if they're not feeling like that expectation that they have online is actually meeting their expectations or you know, is actually being fulfilled. Um, so the challenge then for the manufacturers are how do we meet, how do we meet buyers' expectations across all the channels and not only get the, the products being sold on multiple channels, but that it's actually consistent and accurate product information so that as buyers go from channel to channel, as they're, they're going through that buying journey, their confidence is growing across their, their search and their likelihood of converting is getting higher and higher and their likelihood of being a repeat customer then of course gets higher and higher. So that's really the foundational piece of what we're talking about here is that full digital experience. So drilling down a little bit more, the challenge that manufacturers have then is meeting that buyer's, uh, you know, their expectations, but not just at the point of sale, but before their purchase and after their purchase. So we know that 73% of buyers expect companies to understand their unique needs. So, you know, let's say that they've purchased a piece of equipment and it's well known that in 18 months, that piece of equipment has a maintenance part that, that needs to be purchased. Consumers, B2B consumers, are, have this expectation that a company is going to anticipate their needs. So maybe, you know, three months before that, that maintenance part is due, they're going to get an, an email um, with a link to the product saying that, you know, you're, you're likely going to need this part. Um, and they have these expectations. And that's a lot of pressure on a brand to have their product information in such a way, not just a history of purchase, but in such a way that they can tell a buyer, if you've bought this piece of equipment, 
you're going to need this part. And you might, you know, have all of these after sale service maintenance repair opportunities that really increase profitability, which is that um, statistic on the right hand side. We know, and these statistics are, are from um, a couple of different places. One of um, the McKinsey did a survey with um, B2B um, their manufacturers, and a lot of this data is from that survey. Um, that over 50% of profits can be generated through after sales service and maintenance. So if the product information of a brand is presented in a way that a consumer can find what they need, a product that is connected to, related to the whole good that they purchased, this piece of equipment, machinery, whatever the case may be, um, they need to be able to find those products. They need to be able to know that that's the right spec for the product that I'm looking for and it's connected to my original purchase. So a brand being able to deliver that product information in a way that allows that buyer to find it is really what we're talking about here. And if they can't find it, they can't buy it. So um, another, another really important piece of uh, the online experience is accurate product information and complete product information. And we know that 33% of B2B buyers return products bought online due to insufficient product information. So, well, we all know that product returns are a huge drain on profitability. But as a buyer, now this is true if you're a B2B buyer or a B2C buyer, you're online, you're looking for a product, you might look at it on a couple different sites, maybe there's missing information, you, there's some specs that you you wish you had, but they're not being shown. So you make an assumption about what that is based on maybe the photo. Um, and you take a gamble, you make that purchase, you receive it, it's not what you thought it was. The insufficient information means that that product is no longer gonna meet your needs and so you have to return it. Um, the same goes with incorrect information or you know, conflicting information on different, on different um, channels. That's really, you know, just degrading the buyer confidence. Um, and so when they experience that, um, it really, going back to the other statistic of seven and 10 buyers are gonna switch suppliers if the digital buying process doesn't meet their needs. You know, you can start to see how all of these statistics are really connected. And what it's telling us is buyers, B2B buyers are really dependent on a robust, comprehensive, experience online with product information. They're telling that, telling us that over and over again. So the challenge is, how do you leverage your product information to actually enhance the customer experience, anticipate what they need, help them find what they need, give them a guided buying experience because you've been able to present your product information in a way that allows them to configure SKUs, to, to find things that are related that they might also need because if they've purchased product A, it's very likely that they're gonna to wanna to purchase product B. So having that organized and presented is the challenge. So there are some other statistics that we know that are starting to color the way that B2B buyers think about the, um, the suppliers that they use. So we know that 80% of B2B buyers believe that brands need to be transparent on their environmental footprint. And we know that over 90% of S&P's 500 companies are already publishing environmental, social, and governance reports. So this information is coming out. Consumers are getting used to seeing it. They're hearing about it. They want to know what is the environmental impact of these products, whether it's the sourcing of the raw goods, the carbon footprint, that footprint that's created in the manufacturing of those goods, in the delivery of those goods. This is information that buyers are now expecting to see. And four and five global manufacturers plan to transition to carbon neutral operations. Now we know that there is a much more advanced push for this in the EU, um, which probably colors that statistic. It's probably pretty different here in the US, but the point is that it's changing and evolving and buyer expectations are growing in this area. So the challenge then is how do you present 
that information to a buyer knowing they're going to be buying on multiple channels and they have this expectation of robust product information and an expectation of this sustainability um, transparency. So that's another thing that you know we have to think about. And then but lastly, what I'll talk about here is the technology, um, the needs, the, the, the technology that is able to support the delivery of this. So we know that in order to harness the power of your data, you need to have systems, process, technology in place that allows you to actually deliver it to the buyer, to the channels, to the retailers, to the distributors, wherever you're selling it. Um, we know that 81% of workers believe that AI improves productivity and decision making. And we also know that as you look into the future, let's say 2030, according to this statistic, there's an expected labor shortage of 2 million workers. So how do you balance the ability to meet these new increasing demands from B2B buyers, but also deal with what we're expecting it to be a pretty significant labor shortage? And we also know that less than 40% of manufacturers are actually using product information to deliver a customer experience online that actually um, increases conversion, that builds confidence, and that that leads to a repeat customer. There's a lot of product data in manufacturing and like research and development and production, right? That all has to be there. All of the specs, all of that, um, those technical details, it's all there, but 60% of manufacturers aren't actually leveraging that to deliver on the expectations that we're, we know B2B buyers have. So there's this disconnect, right? And there's this enormous opportunity as a manufacturer to start shifting and leveraging that product information to deliver that experience. So with that, and I do hope that you'll have questions and, and maybe you could share some insights about your experience across these different themes. Um, you know, if we'll have time at the end to talk about that. Um, but with that, I'm gonna pass it over um, to MK, who's really gonna talk about, you know, how, product data can be leveraged and what that looks like so that we can make, you know, omni-channel, have the omni-channel experience, that customer experience, the sustainability um, expectations, and how we can really deliver on automation. So um, knowing product data is what really drives all of that. So with that, over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. So I know that Julie just really shared um, a lot of alarming statistics and, and, you know, some of them are more well-known than others, but at the end of the day, I wanted to give you really kind of a third party lens of um, in the technology consulting space, like when we work with clients to really make sure that, that we help them with their product data, what is their why and what is their big picture of what they're trying to get out of that? And what we hear time and time again is it really is ensuring that they're able to take that product data that they have had for countless years that might be living in many different pl places, many different hard drives. Um, they might be on share drives, they might be on desktops in different formats, taking all of that data and making sure that they can take it from transactional to really helping it benefit them for the future and, and turning it into transformative data. Um, and, and one thing that Julie and I wanted to point out here is you see these five pictures across um, this screen here, six pictures for you here. And, and these were actually chosen on purpose. Um, if you look on the left side and you're really seeing that windmill from, from its infancy, from you know working with the original architect to design it, and then all the way over into getting work done, um, you know, and building it. And then, you know, five, 10, 20 years down the line, it might need to be serviced. And what does that look like? And you think about all of the different people, literally probably hundreds, if not thousands of people that are touching this one product throughout its entire product journey. 
And you think about in an organization, how many people it takes to really roll out innovation, roll out new products, get all of the specs, all of the description, all the pricing, all of that ready to go. Um, and how having that in truly one source of truth can really be incredibly beneficial um, in aligning all that those processes up. So I wanted to highlight for you really five different areas of focus um, and as, we, as we think about kind of the why behind product information management and, and having things in, in one place. And it really does start with that one source of truth. So what we've heard from clients is really having them be able to organize and manipulate and change that data, as well as know where to go to fill those gaps. Um, if product information is missing, they know where to go. Um, and then also to be able to connect relationships across SKUs. So one thing that InRiver really allows you to do is to be able to have um, when you're updating one parent product, if you want some of those attributes to be able to trickle down um, to other parent to other products that might be under it, you're not updating all of that data in say a hundred different SKUs. You're only updating it with the parent, and then that information trickles down through inheritance, which is really neat. So really having that one source of product truth is huge. And then also making sure that that data is accurate. Um, you know, it, we hear time and time again, working with various manufacturers who then have various suppliers, various retail partners, et cetera, that having that data accurate in one place is huge. And you know that that information is then complete when you're able to send it to distributors. The collaboration that can happen inside and River is incredible. Um, and, and I know from my time working at large organizations, we all tend to operate in silos. Um, and you know what's happening, you know, in your world and maybe in one or two other worlds kind of cross-functionally. But knowing that PIM really can and does touch so many different teams across the organization and manufacturers, this really does allow your teams to talk to each other and understand roles and responsibilities within the PIM, which is huge. And then you also have the opportunity to integrate PIM and InRiver across your tech stack. So integrations are quite common. If we think about, you know, whether it's CRM or ERP, or you might have a translation site that you're working with, um, or you, you know, may have different areas of your tech stack that might need to talk to InRiver and to PIM, that's another area um, that we also focus on as well. And then really overall, just managing that customer experience. Um, there's a lot of analytics inside InRiver that really does allow you to see, okay, here's where my contact gaps are. Here's where I need to make sure that I complete so that we ultimately can increase sales and really see the value in that product data and in that richness um, that you're focused on. And then also just wanted to give you a peek under the tent here on the next slide is really, you know, the why um, behind PIM. And, and at the end of the day, it really does make sure that we have data integrity. Um, and we hear this time and time again when we talk to various clients about you know, why has this project been successful for you or why is this implementation so important? It really all, is all about having that one source of truth and that data integrity um, across your organization to make sure that everyone has the confidence that everything is accurate. Um, and when you have the confidence internally, then you know that your buyer is feeling that much more secure um, about your product. So at the end of the day, you know, when Julie was talking earlier about just all the statistics of if a, if a buyer is not having a great experience, it's just one click of a button and they're going to go somewhere else. And so when they have that confidence and that great experience um, with your products, they're going to continue to return, um, which then just leads to the higher conversion and making sure that they're coming back time and time again with that customer retention. Um, and really, if they enjoy their experience with one product, they know they're going to come back for future products. And also that speed to market, you know, with the click of a button, um, they really are enable, able to see accurate product information. Um, and in River does really allow that to happen. Um, it's a quick place to go, update things, be able to get it out to your partners, um, which is huge for the future um, and continuing that future growth. So wanted to make sure that we highlighted for you, really, it all starts with that data integrity and then what that can lead to um, from ultimately growing your business standpoint. 
So now what? Um, we talked a lot about what a PIM is, why it's needed, what our current state is, um, and wanted to give you a peek under the tent when a lesion comes in to implement a PIM and specifically in river, how we go about doing that and really what is our mindset. And we really do take a phased approach to ultimately making sure that things are successful. Um, we always like to think about it as, you know, especially as a mom of two young ones, we're, we're learning to crawl, then we slowly walk, and then long-term is to run. So what does it look like to really take that phased approach? It really starts with organizing. Um, and we will would identify then from an internal project owner, audit your current data and really make sure that we understand your current state, your current processes and start small. We usually start with say one brand or product line for that first phase is we wanna make sure that we get that right before we expand um, to the product organization. And then we transition into the activate phase. And that's really where we're taking time to document the requirements and design um, for what in river would look like for your organization. We really focus on designing that data model and really configuring the PIM for your specific needs. Um, and that is specific and different for every organization. So this is a really key part to our phased approach. And then it's all about enhancing. Um, so we'll integrate the PIM into your broader tech stack. And this is something that we would talk about, you know, in, in some of our first conversations is what does your broader tech stack look like? Would in River need to make sure that it's integrated with your broader tech stack or could it be a standalone technology? Um, we can also have the opportunity to publish content to various selling channels. So that's also you know, a huge benefit to InRiver and really be able to incorporate additional functionality into your uh, InRiver platform. So whether that's catalog layouts, sell sheets, et cetera, um, there's lots of capabilities within InRiver. And then we move into that expanding phase. So it's incorporating any additional product lines or brands into PIM and really be able to rinse and repeat and making sure that all of that product information is not only in PIM, but then also enhanced for the future. And then that's really where we get to that optimized phase. So we're able to activate what we talked about a little bit earlier in the digital shelf analytics side of things within InRiver to really make sure that we're monitoring how products are performing on your digital shelf um, and think about any other selling channels or product data that we wanna make sure that we get in there to really increase conversion. And we're re always constantly refining and thinking about, okay, how can we improve these processes and iterating for the future? It's all about increasing conversion and really thinking through that customer experience for the future. You know, I would add here, I think that when you, if, if you're at, they, you know, at, at ground zero right now with really having your arms around product data, if it's living in spreadsheets, if it's really siloed across the organization, it can feel super overwhelming. How, where do you start? I think it's, you know, important to know that it doesn't have to be everything from day one, right? Just to underscore what MK is saying here is, you know, start with a division, start with, with one product line and, and get your arms around what does that look like? Um, what is the process for um, actually getting those products to market? Um, and then when you can get some quick wins, get that going, it, it builds adoption, it builds confidence. Talk about buyer confidence, right? How about like, you know, team confidence internally when you can see um, what that does um, and how it works, it's easier to, you know, grow and and add um add use of that and and really get that adoption internally so it doesn't have to be as overwhelming as it sounds when you think about it absolutely we always think it's funny when we um start some original conversations with clients though they're they get a little like shy about talking to us about like their current state and and at the end of the day we hear a lot of things and see a lot of things and um, you know, that's why we're here to help. Um, in River exists for a reason. There, there is a major need out there for manufacturers to wrap their head around this. It's an incredible platform to be able to help have that one source of truth and really get that data out to where it needs to be. And Elysian is just here to help along the way and really be able to implement that technology to make sure that we're holding your hand and all rowing the boat in the same direction to, to achieve your goals. Yeah, and uh, that really concludes um, our content for today. Um, 
we would love to know what questions you have. We can flip back to some of these other slides to talk about some of these statistics or things that you're hearing um, in the marketplace from your from your buyers and the things that you're experiencing. So drop questions in the chat, unmute yourself and let us know what you're thinking. Alyssa, you got a shy group today. I know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I mean, well, well, I'll ask you guys, are you feeling like you're seeing these demands? I mean, do that when you, when you see these statistics, are you sensing um, that, you know, your buyers are, are driving, you know, these expectations on your business as well? Not, not, not everyone at once. You guys got, yes. to, <laughs> you've got to take turns. Um, all right. Well, takes any questions? Okay. Yeah, no questions, <laughs> I guess. Well, our information is here. If you, you you know, if you, if you have questions later, um, we would be glad to answer them for you. Um, and you know, if anything, I hope that, um, you know, hearing kind of the, what's happening in, in the space, um, with B2B buyers and, and the expectations that they have, um, you know, hopefully it will at least have you think about your product information, maybe a little differently. Um, you know, we're historically, you know, I think, um, B2B, um, sellers could, you know, get away with some pretty limited product data and that's just not the case anymore. And so it really has become such an important, way to interact with consumers and um you know and hopefully today you learned a little bit more about what they're thinking and you learned something that's that's always the hope right um and um it was really uh, nice presenting to you today yes well i just want to thank you julie and mk <laughs> for presenting today and just a reminder to everybody that the session is recorded or was recorded today. So I would be happy to pass the link on to anyone that would like it. And it'll also be on our association websites if you're um, looking to, to save or have this information. So, okay. Thank well, you thank all. You <laughs> Until next time. Thank yes. you. Have a great day. Appreciate the opportunity. Have a <laughs> Bye -bye. great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.